Hello everyone, welcome back. It's Space Engineers plus me, episode 29. I'm Ignatius, and today, it's so hard to go past a view of the planet without stopping to just kind of gawk at it for a little while. It's it's so well done. I, re I really like what they did with the planets uh, and, and just how they look from a distance. But as promised, uh, we have to go grind the uh, under supports from the hull. We were going to do this right after we took off like we would do with most ships where we just kind of let the inertial dampeners uh, leave the ship hovering and then we go underneath and grind it off but that would have been a big waste of fuel leaving the ship hovering with inertial dampeners on the surface of the planet so I decided to leave them in place until we got into space where there was no gravity and have the ship stopped and then we can get out and we can go around and grind them off and then continue our trip to the moon which you well you would be able to see it there we go you see it very briefly off in the distance it's not a quick trip i have to say the maximum speed is 100 meters per second uh it's it's several thousand meters <laughs> to the moon but we get into the ship and then i decided to speed this up this is 12 times normal speed because it took 28 minutes i just a little spoiler alert 28 minutes to get from where we left off in the last episode just outside the gravity well of the planet uh, to just outside the gravity well of the moon. Now, the moon does have a little bit of gravity. It's not the same as the gravity on the planet, but there is a little bit of gravity, and that's something that I hadn't, frankly, accounted for. It, it wasn't that important of a detail that I, you know, gave a lot of thought to it, whether or not the moon would have gravity and how much. It makes sense that it does. But for the time being, it was just uh, a slow but relaxing trip off into the direction of the moon, the, the general direction of the moon, and you can see kind of on the right hand side just below the center line on the moon there's that white patch that i'm thinking is dense ice which is to say you know deeper than just surface ice we're not necessarily talking about drill once and get three times as much ice as you would on a planet no it's just if we want ice that's kind of the place where i would go to look for it first just because of the color we are going to need more ice and quite a lot of it to refill our hydrogen tanks to keep our oxygen tanks full and allow us to carry on and do the things that we need to do but our primary purpose for coming to the moon is for platinum which is the one resource that we haven't been able to get our hands on in any quantity up to this point so we're going to gather up some platinum um, keep our ship going and then decide from there what we want to do whether we want to go back down to the planet find another ice lake to set up on uh, probably if we were to do that we would build a new base with all of the machines that we want doing the um, production, the refining, and all that other stuff, and then just mine the hell out of the lake until we had all the goodies that we want to build our next ship to take to the next planet. Or we could just stay on the moon and uh, build a bunch of stuff in low gravity and then take that to the next planet. It's six of one, half dozen of the other. But we're close enough now, obviously, to the moon that we, we start to feel... Uh, like we're approaching something that we'll be able to land on at some point in the not horribly Distant future you can see we fire the thrusters we turn them back on so that we um, Have the means of slowing our descent in the event that we should come in a little bit too fast When we bring it back down to normal speed you can see We're moving quickly, but we're not moving in a, in a way that makes me feel like we're in sort of danger mode But it won't be long as we proceed like this before the no gravity changes to uh, the moon's gravity and now I was gonna keep going and just kind of do like the horizon tour of the planet but I realized we were heading to the dark side of the moon where there wouldn't be much to see we don't we don't want to go to the dark side of the moon not this time so we adjust our course very important in this case to uh, not get cocky with the course and to just find ourselves wandering all over space because we're not sort of canceling out the direction we were going before you know just working with the inertia and and all that other good stuff if you're into the physics you understand and even if you're not into physics you understand the whole idea of going around a corner and it wants to pull you in the direction you were going before you turned we want to make sure we don't get pulled in the direction that we were going before we turned so there's a giant crater here on the icy section of the moon so if we wanted ice this is where we would start looking and now the whole idea is to um, descend lower to the surface We've got the ore detector on the front of the ship, low down on the hull, so that we're not necessarily um, blind. We can come in, we can maybe get an idea for what's available, and we're looking for platinum. First platinum we see, we'll make a GPS marker, and then we'll carry on, and we'll uh, do a little tour of the moon, such as the plan. 
plans. What, what good are plans? But really, the one thing that I didn't take into account here is that in order to offset the gravity on the moon, which isn't strong, but is present, I have inertial dampeners on, and obviously the thrusters are firing, and they're constantly using fuel. This is... I, it never even dawned on me that this would be kind of a factor. But at this point, you can see we're just kind of descending, getting close, we hope, to the surface so that we can pick up some stuff with the ore detector. And then when we, once we get low enough, then we can start moving along in a forward direction and see what we can come across. It's a lot harder to see the dark patches on the moon because they're, everything is a dark patch on the moon so far. It's so rugged that everything casts a shadow and makes it very, very difficult to see where the, the cheat spots might be if we were looking for minerals. But, I mean, it's neat. It's the first time we're here. There's different colors. <laughs> some things are shiny, some things are not. Uh, and we're in a great big giant crater, which, if we were going to land, this would be not a bad place because it's mostly flat. Um, it's just, it seems like the kind of place, if you didn't come here with plenty of hydrogen for your jetpack you would have a really difficult time getting around just because everything is so, so steep and rugged. So now, just kind of picking and choosing where we might want to go to look for stuff. In this case, we're looking for the patches, the dark patches. We're not really seeing any dark patches, but we're, uh, all you can do is look around and then pick a direction and go. Eventually, that's what we'll do. <laughs> Trying to stay low enough again so the order detector works without being low enough to scrape off the bottom of the hull on a rock because we misjudged the distance it won't be long it won't be long before it feels like we're actually getting somewhere again the thrusters when you're in a gravity well are basically constantly going because of the inertial dampener unless you're moving forward uh, and holding down the space bar at the same time there's always thrusters working that you're maybe not necessarily expecting to have working and this ship turns like a pregnant whale it is so very very slow to turn to go anywhere but i guess it's to be expected i mean relative to everything that we build up to this point this is by far our largest ship it's two and a half to three times the size of the blue behemoths airborne section uh which was you know large enough to reach around the ground section so in terms of mass this is the largest one uh by a bit i would imagine but in terms of just overall surface area uh, it's definitely the the larger of the two. So you can see, now we're starting to see some resources showing up with the ore detector. There's some iron there, uh, or maybe that was nickel. I think that was iron. It's hard to see from this view. And then you see right on the edge of the crater, I thought that was kind of neat, nickel, cobalt, and iron, but just sitting there right on the edge. If I didn't have better things to do, that's the kind of thing that I would want to jump down and just start mining, just because it's there. <laughs> It's so convenient, but we're on the lookout for platinum. So we see more nickel, and then before long, there it is, the Holy Grail. Didn't take long at all to find once we actually started moving. I saw it, and then all of a sudden it was gone, so we're going to stop and we're going to reverse until it comes back with the orb detector, and then we can leave a GPS marker. We'll know where it is. There it is, platinum. From now till the end of time... Once again, in the damn gravity well, leaving the inertial dampeners going so that the thrusters are running constantly, keeping the ship stationary while we go down and leave a GPS marker right next to the surface where the platinum is. Not necessarily the smartest thing to do, but old habits die hard. This is really, I mean, since we started playing the game, this is the first time that we've spent any real amount of time in low gravity. Um, and also, <laughs> remember when I was saying how many times am I going to suffocate myself? Uh, before I get in the habit of putting my helmet on before I leave the ship. There was the first time, almost. But the uh, the nice thing about it is that the gravity, um, the low gravity means you don't use nearly as much hydrogen for the jetpack, which is kind of nice, because after a while, down on the surface of a planet, um, refilling hydrogen tanks for your jetpack gets to be a little bit old. A little bit old. So this looks like ice. The white and the blue stuff... Uh, definitely we'll be hoping that it's ice, because our ship is going to need it. But also a lot of stone, and more importantly, ye old platinum. So just like everything else uh, that we found on the planet, we mark it with the GPS, nav the GPS 
uh, marker and then we can find it easily regardless of what might happen in the future so platinum on the moon just so that I don't get it confused with anything else I mean realistically speaking it's not like we're gonna go back to the planet and see the platinum and think it's somewhere else but just for the sake of being descriptive make sure that we, we notice that it's uh, on the earth-like moon that's what the EL for is the earth-like planet earth-like moon and then we fly back up to the ship which you can see all of the thrusters uh, burning <laughs> The inertial dampener, all that fuel going up into uh, Nowheresville, and just like that, flying around exploring, the fuel cuts out. We're out of fuel, the moon has gravity, we have no thrusters. It's just a matter of time, really. We're, we have no control whatsoever of the ship at this point. Bounce a little bit off the edge, down into the crater, flip over. The ship is so large, it's really difficult to kind of get a feel for the scale of the damage that we're taking. So we load it from the, the autosave, which was with maybe 30 seconds worth of fuel left at the point where it did the last autosave. And now it's kind of like, okay, well, we know we're going to run out of fuel, so let's find a safe place to land and just touch down as quickly as we can before we run out of fuel. We see the crater off in the distance. It looks nice and flat. Not sure if I'm going to have enough fuel to make it at this point because I couldn't really judge at that point where the last autosave was. There goes the fuel. <laughs> we didn't have enough fuel to turn around, much less start heading in the direction of the crater that would have been a good landing spot. And once again, with no thrusters, we have no control. And because it's on the moon, it's not even a super spectacular crash. It's just kind of like plump down into a canyon. There you go, you might slide around a little bit, some things will break off. That's just the nature of the beast. So here we are. <laughs> Attempt number three. Be a little bit more careful uh, with the fuel. Get down low as you know quickly as we can out of fuel. <laughs> so we've tried three different times now to get the ship down on the ground as quickly as possible with the fuel that we had available once we realized we were in trouble and we always end up with less fuel than we need. So I decided maybe the best thing that we could do at this point is to escape vertically, get out of the moon's gravity well, get the ship stationary, and then we can kind of do what we need to do from there. Once we've got some more hydrogen, then we can think about landing it a little bit more um, stable E. <laughs> see, So you can see, I turned everything off as soon as I loaded in, got my bearings, kind of made a decision exactly what I was going to do and how I was going to do it, turned on the hydrogen supply, gave us some thrust to lift us up out of the gravity well and then turn everything off again so that we're not even burning a little bit of fuel to keep the pilot lights going, so to speak, with the hydrogen. We're just basically going with the inertia. The gravity on the moon isn't so strong that it's slowing us down all that quickly. So now we're just kind of hoping, hoping that we'll be able to get out of the gravity well before the uh, before we either start heading back down to the surface of the moon, courtesy of gravity, or we run out of fuel. We made it clear out of the gravity well, so we're, we're not slowing down anymore, but that's kind of a problem because we don't want the ship to continue moving. If we, the ship keeps moving and we leave the ship to go down to the moon to do anything, when we come back, the ship won't be there. We may never find it again, or if we do find it, we'll have collided with something, and that's the only reason why we found it, because it stopped when it hit something in space and damaged itself. So the only thing that we can really do, that we can hope to do, is turn on the thrusters again, turn on the fuel, turn on the thrusters, and then try and slow our ascent, slow, <laughs> slow our ship speed, and we didn't have enough fuel to do it. We didn't have enough fuel to get our ship speed down to zero, so we're heading off into space at 43 meters per second. Nothing we can do about it. <laughs> We can't get out and go find more fuel. We can't do anything. We're just kind of stuck here. I, I would imagine if I was really adamant about getting through it, I could have maybe 
Actually, no, because atmospheric thrusters won't work in space. There wasn't enough atmosphere to do anything. So even if we threw on some atmospheric thrusters just to slow us down, it wouldn't work. So here, even more carefully, making sure that we're, you know, inertial dampeners are going off, turn on the fuel supply, make sure that we let off the space bar as soon as we reach maximum speed, and then turn off the fuel and hope we make it out of the gravity well with enough fuel to bring our speed back to zero, basically in orbit of the moon. And that would be where we would leave off. That was the goal in this whole thing, is just get ourselves up out of the gravity well, get ourselves stopped, think about what we were gonna do from there. I think, possibly, there we go, we're out of the gravity well, give ourselves a little bit of room just kind of carry on going the direction that we were going so that we have a little bit of room to maneuver and then we can turn off or sorry turn on the thrusters turn on the inertial dampeners bring our speed down to zero hopefully before we run out of fuel and then shut it down and figure out what to do from there you can see not in a rush to stop the ship just yet Although, if you go too far, it's just that extra distance that you have to travel in your jetpack when you're hauling a load of ice back to the ship. There's only so much we can do uh, with things operating independently of what we would like to happen. So we turn it on, at the inertial dampener's on. If it gets down to zero, uh, we're in good shape to at least some extent. We've got plenty of full hydrogen um, tanks, the personal things that you carry around in your suit. So we can make trips to the moon and back with our jetpack. That's not big, that big of an issue. Uh, just as long as we've got the ship marked, we'll probably have to leave a, a marker. And you can see a nice view of the planet, the moon, the ship. We made it. We're in orbit around the moon. We're not in the best of shape, but it could be a lot worse. We've got some platinum marked. We're going to find some ice. We're going to get some fuel in our ship. And then we're going to go from there. So if you want to be notified when I add the next video and other videos in this and other series, you can always subscribe to my channel or follow me on social media. Links for social media are in the information box below the video. Feel free to leave your comments and feedback. Thanks for watching, guys, and take care.